Welcome to Inspired Learning, the Path of Ezra podcast with Badger and Yoji. My name is Badger. I'm Yoji. And it's patch notes time. It's, oh, yeah. it's, it's patch notes. But first of all, what do we think of patch notes? Right out of the gate. <laughs> How have patch notes been for you, Yoji? Um, I'm kind of a bit, a bit underwhelmed overall. Um, yeah. I think, like... What I liked about the patch notes is that I got to read them very quickly, so it didn't take me all day to read them, which is nice because I had to work almost all day. The downside is there wasn't really that much in there, but for me personally, I think that is because the uh, all the like interesting changes will happen like outside of balance stuff. I think a lot of this patch will be more carried by alternate quality gems, tons of stuff to play with. Uh, alternate bases, um, lots of like new skills that we have, and not so much like by balance changes at least that's my impression because there wasn't really that much surprising or like even all that interesting balance stuff there how about you yeah yeah i i I didn't get surprised at all by much in the patch notes i think that's the biggest thing with patch notes i I always want to get wowed and surprised by you know these these cool new path of exile uh uh you know numbers or anything like that that they might release in the patch notes or extra uh things on the tree this time around we kind of already got wowed by all of the you know announcements of the skills like crackling lance and all of this new stuff blazing salvo and then patch notes come around and it's just like you know things got nerfed that we expected to get nerfed um all all of the support gems are already there obviously they've announced them all and it's just kind of getting into the nitty-gritty but nothing that that surprised me uh of uh you know extra nerfs or buffs to anything um and uh yeah which i guess is good on one hand we don't get you know we don't get like spooked or anything like that um from anything just coming out of left field we can kind of very easily piece together what this league is going to look like in terms of the meta i feel i don't know are, are you kind of are you kind of seeing the meta kind of evolve out in your head or not really the large variables we of the stuff we don't know yet, as I mm. said, the bases, when they uh, yeah. uh, revealed the item filter stuff, there were like quite a lot of interestingly named bases. That seems to be, for example, like a flasking belt. That could be pretty good. Um, yeah. So I think the meta overall, uh, if, I think it's still... Like, I think the initial league starting meta will be pretty defined by what we already know because people will go on in mostly with the information we have now. Um, but the like once it is clear what is available, how available will all the gems be, how easy is it to get the ones you need, um, I think the meta might shift quite a bit after a few weeks when like some crazy OP shenanigans will be discovered, which will, I think, definitely happen because there are so many variables. There will be at least like a few things that GG completely missed to balance, and uh, oh, yeah. some people will 100% figure that stuff out. Um, but yeah, overall, I don't know. I think the meta currently... I think it looks... It might feel more predictable than it actually is. That's kind of what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, that that actually makes sense. Now you're making me think, oh, maybe, maybe I'm trying to predict the meta that doesn't or will not exist or will change, you know, straight away. I like to I like to try and predict things, but they never really turn out. <clears throat> cough, cough, badger PI. That didn't really work out, did it? <laughs> <laughs> I actually, I actually just yesterday made a video where I basically for eight minutes bragged about how I well I predicted the manifesto. So I think I saw I the a... thumbnail of that. I didn't watch the video. I was like, yeah, yeah, nice, good job. Yeah, I, I predicted. Uh, <laughs> I made five predictions, and basically four and a half of them became true. Uh, about like what the manifesto says. So yeah. I'm not too surprised about the stuff that is in the patch notes. I'm a yeah. bit more surprised about stuff that is not in the patch notes that I expected to be in the patch notes yeah and one big example would be we have the whole curse rework right we have like a huge curse overhaul mm-hmm. we have now hexes which is like basically the aoe curses and then we have marks which are boss single target curses which i think is a fantastic change it's mm-hmm. like it gives mm-hmm. really nice identity to all the um different curses it allows them to kind of get rid of the super 
easy way to balance, uh, like uh, to to get generate charges, which they've basically taken away from us now, um, which <laughs> is like assassins mark on hit rings. Yeah. But at the same time, um, why didn't get occultist any anything? Like we have got a this whole ascendancy that has like two a big two um, mm. node branch of curses. There's no doom mm. in there. There's no cool hex. Nothing. There's like just absolutely nothing there. Also, maybe when they like nerf assassin, maybe they could have given him like a mark. Marking a target makes kind of sense for an assassin. Maybe or maybe yeah. with the raider. Maybe they could use some interesting new stuff. Yeah. Dex based marks. Like, I think the mark notes are like ranger to duelist ish. Yeah, on yeah, the, they're, on the they're tree, so... much more around the shadow ranger area. So, yeah, like ranger could be something really interesting there to do with marks. Or, you know, I, I can yeah. imagine Deadeye being pretty interesting with some mark nodes or something like that. And, you know, yep. like, uh, yeah, I, I'm glad you brought up the uh, the occultist. I didn't want to be the first one to crap on, on uh, no occultist changes because I was really thinking at least something would come through because it's so curse focused and curse heavy this this patch like um yeah, yeah I, I i was pretty disappointed about that as well but you know maybe the curses will just carry themselves and then occultist will be good because of that i, I don't really think so but yeah i think it's the best best case scenario but the problem with occultist is it's kind of a bit uh of an issue ascendancy where you mm. kind of want to play cold dot or you want to play chaos dot basically yep. because that's the other big branch you have mm. uh the s theme is almost out it has a like very slight mana theme with the power charges and the mana node but it's mostly curses and dots and yeah curses and dots are good but the trickster does it so well and that's another thing i'm actually surprised we didn't see trickster kind of like dodge the 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 patch notes completely Somehow i mean he's good just... at stacking dodge but absolutely neo matrix dodged the heck out of these patch notes that don't understand how um, i've been looking at lots of numbers and we're going to get all into this you know we, we've seen the nerfs to glancing blows and everything like that as well which in my opinion isn't a massive nerf they do change the the uh, location of that as well so it's not as easily thread of it's hope pointless. um yeah yeah, yeah. it's pointed in a in a weird way. I did some a couple of calculations. You can still thread of hope it, but not nearly as well. And picking up some other good nodes um, how do you, uh, how around do you there. Oh, you, you have to kind of like go kind of further down uh, to the. You have to go to RT the and like node. the RT three pointer, and then yeah, yeah. And oh, so yeah. it's it's a pretty bad spot to actually do it. So, um, but uh, honestly, like uh, you can rather than going, you know, all right, I'm not gonna go all the way over to glancing blows and pick that up you can invest more into your wind dancer and your dodge and yep. uh, getting dodge capped on trickster and, and trickster is still absolutely insane defensively it's still going to be a really meta hardcore pick um i'm i'm almost certain there but we'll see we'll see <laughs> i mean acid strain contagion soul rent mm. and zero nerfs uh, yes. so i think it's going to be fine which is also yes. very surprising because yep. If you look at the list of like, for example, the, the la, la, like last races. If you mm. look at the list of skills that were in there, yeah, almost everything that's like popular, like super popular or meta defining in most in many races, like spell slinging has been nerfed. Um, but like the actual ED contagion itself, like not absolutely nothing. I, I expected at least like a little bit, maybe like a slight numeric nerf. Mm. But yeah, yeah, like it's, it's I, nothing. I was I was surprised. Like not I, no tricks, no well. nothing. Yeah, minions yeah. got a bit a bit slapped around, like slightly. Slightly. Um. Well, it was it was just redemption sentries, right? Did I miss yeah. anything else for minions or? Um, the it... clusters. The oh cluster yeah, true. Of course, the nerfed. clusters. The yeah. Crit okay. One, so um, yeah, yeah. I think both of the crit ones got nerfed. If the, I the crit correctly. ones and... got massively nerfed. Yeah, that's that's very true. <laughs> it was like just it was actually just like fairly small numeric value mm. nerf but you usually used to stack them so of course it kind of kind of mm. adds up this, what's your I, thoughts I, on assassin uh, that's, assassin that's what I'm, yeah I'm yeah, okay. yeah yeah um uh i have done some calcs and basically in a worst case scenario you lose like five to seven percent damage overall on your end game from what i can see on on a few different builds and it might be more for certain builds and might be less for other builds and everything like that but um um I'm not gonna say exactly what it is, but uh, I I'm starting Assassin next league, uh, and so we can talk about what that build is soon. But yeah, um, uh, Assassin I think 
Uh, look, honestly, I, I, I think it's totally fine right now. It's still super strong in a soft core environment, like really strong. But the defensive layers, your only defensive layers there are still elusive. Obviously, you're still on that side of the tree. You can get some good dodge and spell dodge and everything like that, uh, which is nice, but it's, um, you know, not fully hardcore viable. And I think there's an interesting balance there of having, you know, a lot of damage but not survivable enough. I think Assassin's in a pretty good spot right now. That's just my opinion. Um, but, uh, yeah, what, what do you think of Assassin? I think for softcore, Assassin really hits the sweet spot of, like, mm. speed because it has really good, like, movement speed, uh, yeah. cast speed, whatever. Um, really easy crit capping, which is insane, and just enough defenses to, like, make it survivable without too much investment. I think, like, all the things separately are not as crazy, but having them all on one ascendancy in, like, just the exactly the right amount you want maybe yeah. makes it still still a bit too good even after the nerves um i think mistwalker is like really crazy for defenses like you take no extra damage from crits while elusive is so actually strong. think i think maybe some people might underrate that by quite a bit and the dodge is of course nice the speed from elusive is great uh, also that mm. the elusive does override itself yes yes uh even though it doesn't override itself, kind of like balances it, but you still will yeah. basically always have the. You basically don't take extra damage from crits, and that's I think that's crazy for on like such an offensively strong um, ascendancy. So it's it's yeah. a bit of a it's a bit of a difficult difficult situation. You don't want to nerf it so much that it's not one of the best picks for crit because that's all it kind of does. <laughs> it's it's the crit ascendancy. It's, it's crit. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, then actually, then we Inquisitor existing. Yeah, but... I was just gonna say we can talk about Inquisitor, but like poor inquisitor a lot of the time you know like it's 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 a good ascendancy i think but it's just it's overlooked in so many areas um I think so yeah guys just pick inquisitor inquisitor's good it'll be fun trust me inquisitor is, is decent it's not yeah, great it really anymore is. like i yeah. think i think most people look at the pen node because that used to be the one that like wowed everyone mm. um i think actually taking everything except for the pen nodes is may, still makes for pretty good builds if you have yeah. a non-crit inquisitor and you don't want to take like the the what's currently like just worse than actual elemental penetration but elemental ailment immunity the yes yes recovery is great um the free uh permanent six percent regent from consecrated ground is not bad the defensive mm. nodes are good it's not horrible it's just mm. can't compete but then elemental is also pretty horrible right now so i'm yeah. very surprised that there was like no buffs to the the other caster ones it's such a big caster patch it's like we get so many spell reworks great amounts of new spells and there's like assassin slight nerf necro like a mini tiny nerf mm. that's also weird and yeah the caster yeah. necros are still fine right caster yeah. necros didn't get oh, totally. at all. yeah yeah uh, very, very much so and and i guess uh, we we did kind of mention it before there were the, the big thing that i want to talk about and get your opinion on is the spell slinger nerfs because we did mention that just before but that's that's a big thing that a lot of people are talking about. A lot of people are asking yep. around, like, is Spellsinger just screwed for all of these builds that I wanted to play and level Spellsinger? What do you think about the the thirty percent initial going down to twenty five percent reservation on the Spellslinger? Absolutely no idea. I never played Spellslinger. I think it's <laughs> absolutely not interesting to me at all whatsoever <laughs> as an archetype. Um, I, lo I know people love their one button builds. I avoid one button builds as much as I can. I have no idea. I've not did no uh, calculation. All right, Yoji, like, I'll, I'll take this one. I'll take this one. So yeah. you're the, the spell <laughs> person here, right? I'm like a melee. I, I play melee builds, by the way. <laughs> and we can talk about some some interesting melee stuff. But... Yeah, yeah. I, okay, so spell slinger. Look, like I haven't played around with it heaps, but I do have a little bit of experience with it just because I did bring out a build guide for three point twelve hype. Probably uh, a little bit too early, which was Spellslinger uh, Cold Dot Occultist, which honestly didn't get hit too hard. You can literally just take one uh, support out of the supporting Spellslinger on Cold Snap and your reservation's totally fine after that. Um, and you, you lose like almost no damage from doing that. So it's still totally fine. Um, and I think it's in a really, really good spot right now because... Uh, if if I can like talk about like meta racing and that sort of thing that I like watching, I like watching lots of different types of builds, you know, mm -hmm. or or seeing people come up with really interesting leveling techniques. Spellsinger was getting to a point where it was just 
the way to go with a lot of builds. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, that being said, there's, there's still been... What, what was it in the, the Gauntlet League? There was, like... Uh, I don't know how many different builds in the top 10 or something like that. It was something like that eight different really good, builds yeah. in the top 10, which was awesome. Um, so it's not necessarily Spellslinger's dominating the meta, but you can use Spellslinger with anything and, and absolutely demolish the leveling process. Um, it was a little bit silly leveling with Spellslinger, Coldslinger in the Gauntlet League myself, someone who almost never touches hardcore um, and being able to do it fairly easily after a little bit of practice. Um so I, I think the 30% early is really, really good, but also doesn't do much to the power of Spellslinger itself. Uh, the speed of Spellslinger will be uh, nerfed a little bit. I think the main ones are going to be like your VD and DD with Desecrate. You're going to have to get some more mana reservation there because you're using quite a few different Spellslingers. Um, but it's... Um, I think it's now in a really good spot, uh, although I have a lot of people complaining about it, so we'll see. <laughs> I think a lot of people just really like these, uh, this playstyle, and that's why they are kind of sad that their builds yeah. and their playstyles got nerfed. Also, facilitating leveling. Mm. Um, I think there's there's a decent chunk of the PoE community who just don't really enjoy leveling all that much, and yeah. we're like happy that you can basically skip it, yes. <laughs> mostly. Yes. Um, so I can understand where they're coming from, but I think from like a game health perspective, it makes sense to not have a build that is just clearly the best leveling spec for almost everything. Yeah. Uh, whenever we had that, GGG would nerf it. So it makes sense. Um, what I found a bit weird is that they actually went for spell sling and not for VD at all, because when you look at yeah. like the numbers of VD, it's an auto targeting spell, mm -hmm. and if you like with a number of orbs you can summon at once, the damage effectiveness of that thing is actually pretty damn good for like the quality of life it has yeah. normally when you have a spell that's like super high quality of life like a kind of no like auto aiming projectile arc for example like a super auto aimy um spell it has low damage effectiveness doesn't have too high, high initial damage and vd does ha still have that and it's super automated i I, yeah. I was really surprised to not see that as well um yeah. and same with the uh, offering nerf that you mentioned um i was also surprised to not see bone offering address and instead yeah. they just like nerf they basically mm -hmm. nerfed Flash Offering for no reason. <laughs> yes. The, the big and thing there Spirit is... Spirit Offering was already down. <laughs> they yeah. still nerfed it again. The, the big no thing reason. there is, is not only Bone Offering, but any sort of recovery on hit, energy shield or life recovery on hit, whether it's percentage or flat gained, there was absolutely no nerf to that. Um, and with the difference between 50% damage taken through Glancing Blows and 65% damage taken through Glancing Blows... If you're invested enough into that recovery, it's going to make almost no difference to your defenses. Um, so, I, yeah, I was super confused about that as well. And and we are still going to see full block or close to full block necros. Um, definitely still, obviously, full block if you're taking glancing blows. Uh, we're still going to see a, a prominence of, of full block gladiators uh, with crazy life block recovery and everything like that which i think that suits the gladiator play style I, I think that's really cool for gladiator and i think that should sit there but um something doesn't seem quite right with the the life on block with necro still being there on the bone offering i don't know now yeah, it's really interesting i don't know how i feel about that mm. that's true yeah but anyway we're talking nerfs 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 and everything like that but we're not actually yeah. really talking about what you know what we are gaining buffs? out of this personally yeah yeah were there buffs what are we excited for you know like um uh, you mentioned you know well i, I know this as well yoji you you enjoy playing melee yep. is your league starter or what you're thinking of a league starter is it going to be melee here's the big nope. question nope oh <laughs> <laughs> i'm actually playing an ascendancy that i um for some weird reason have mm -hmm. not really played much at all even though it's really popular it's really strong mm -hmm. and yeah it's, it's it's a bit weird but yeah, as, as mentioned in the last podcast um it's going to be trickster and it's going to be fireball i'm actually sticking with that i yes! originally wanted to play firestorm ignite yeah and then i looked at the numbers and has 50 percent damage effectiveness which is kind of like a big oh oof it's for, so uh, bad oh because it's not that much i mean the the meteor does 150 percent damage so mm -hmm. you add like 75 percent damage effectiveness if you will for the meteor and then the like tiny ones are uh at 
like 50 percent but also the, the the base damage is like four 460 or something like this on top end uh -huh. for, for the it, it's just if you look at fireball it has 1600 damage <laughs> and 240 <laughs> damage effectiveness and it built in 80 percent more multiplier for ignites yes it makes no sense to not play fireball over this so yeah i'm going yeah. fireball i wanted to i wanted meteors but it's not happening it's just it's... too sad I can imagine some people really still wanting to play uh, a Firestorm Ignite, but it's basically like lopping off both of your legs trying to play that over Fireball. Like, Don't play it Ignite. <laughs> play, it, yeah. play it as crit, like maybe on an yeah. Assassin, and mm -hmm. it could probably work pretty well. Maybe you can spell sling it, actually, because uh, yeah. it might benefit from like spamming me. I mean, who doesn't like spamming that would be pretty cool. Yeah, Like a yeah. Fire Slinger having, I don't know, Blazing Salvos on one hand and the... Um, uh, meteors on the other hand or whatever i think Ooh. that could work but don't ignite with the, the numbers just don't support ignite it does not, not have mm -hmm. any ignite bonuses it's just yeah but yeah yeah I, I can imagine something pretty cool with like unleash firestorms looking visually amazing the skill looks really cool i love the look of firestorm this kind of armageddon massive ball raining down on your enemies and you're just laughing in the background but instead of laughing mm -hmm. in actual reality you're just going to be crying into your palms <laughs> because you're going to be doing no damage and then you're just going to swap in a two link fireball and one shot ignite the boss so yeah <laughs> so that's it, it i yeah I, I i was really looking at fireball as well for yeah. my league starter but i am not deciding that so i'm glad that we're not choosing the same league starter that, i was going good, to but yeah i mean yeah. maybe would have would have had a bit of a difference because i'm going archmage as well i'm going archmage oh, fireball stormfire yes. are, um, are you because... hoping because it hasn't confirmed that archmage uh has a fire variant because we've seen the cold variant but i'm pretty sure it's gonna have a fire one as well we should be very if it has a fire variant i might get away without using stormfire yeah which is yeah. Uh, good and if not, I'm just using Stormfire, and it's still good. So then I'm yes. kind of banking on maybe it, maybe we get a fire variant, and I yep. could be using that and just go mm -hmm. full fire. And if not, I can use Stormfire, and it's still fine, yeah. But yep. now, enough about that crap. Let's talk yep. about your league starter. What, what ascendancy are you, Ivo? You said Assassin, right? I did say Assassin, and this segues perfectly into a small little segment that I would like to debut, and uh, probably only have this segment once during the podcast. So it is time for... Discharge watch. It is time for Discharge Watch. I am so absolutely hyped for Discharge and the entirety of today um, on stream. We've been talking about Discharge and all of the different ways that you could build Discharge. Uh, it's been my favorite skill forever and I've never played it on stream because it's always felt really bad to play and there's always been other things that I just want to play. And this league, it's it's finally time uh, basically a three times damage buff and what looks to be a three to four times area buff uh mm -hmm. um we're talking like effective area and not you know numbers area where you know it actually diminishes over time like effective area basically full screen uh discharges with like nine charges um yep. so uh it was basically playing around with discharge and it was like ignite discharge we're gonna go that with a chieftain I was looking at, like, Cyan Discharge, Hierophant Archmage Discharge, but it was all looking a little convoluted for League Starter. And then um, uh, a viewer uh, still donating to Profit, which I don't think uh, Profit is here right now, but they sent me a, a, a path of building just with an Assassin with two Storm Prison Wands, get power charges off them, and mm -hmm. the rest rare gear. Um, punching the numbers in, it has crazy like four million single target damage on a five link and screen wide clear on discharge every two seconds because it's now got a cooldown but yeah I, I then went and tested it just on standard with the you know third of the damage that it's going to have and it was still one shotting uh white tier bosses on no investment so that's I basically my build worried about Mm. Are we worried at all about, about the cooldown? Just no. That you mentioned it. Like yeah, that's clear, a really good are you point. Having yeah. a different clear setup, or are you pro? So the What's the yeah, the, the way to proc the um, the power charges and everything like that is using Stormbrand power charge on crit with the assassin uh, power charges on crit and everything like that, and then just swift brand and faster casting in a four link that procs all of the charges you will ever need. But yep. also, 
Turns out that clears trash in maps very easily as well. So it's an active play style with Swift Brand, uh, Swift Brand you're chucking down your your uh, Storm Brands everywhere and then just discharging on the rares. Um, and it it just works. Like this was, you know, uh, like us testing in, in some low tier maps and everything like that, but just with uh, a Storm Brand clearing the packs and then discharging. And um, I, I, I'm extremely extremely excited uh to see uh, how this will actually feel with three times damage and three times area um yep. and yeah it costs like the calculations that it was basically two storm storm prison ones which are nothing because they're so rare not no, no they're not so rare no they're so, no 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 no, no. They're, so common. <laughs> they're so common that's the one um yep. and just rare gear with life and resistances and assassin uh, the ascendancy carries itself really there, and then obviously you can transition into um, uh, void batteries, or you can weapon swap into shimmerons for insane single target damage, and then swap back. And um, yeah, it it just looks absolutely insane, and I wish right. that I could take credit for it. But as I said, Prophet, who's <laughs> one of my regular viewers, I'm oh. just stealing the build from them. So yeah, <laughs> better stealing a good build than making a crap on yourself. I always yeah, say, so. yeah, true. Um, yeah. I'm wondering, um, how are you like scaling the damage? Are you just like going mm. lightning hit with the power charges, or do you go for like stormfire ignite or something like this? It's it's pretty much just one big hit. Um, so just it's like just lightning like... hit for big shocks and yeah, that's pretty it. pretty right. much. Um, and, but the thing pretty is, good. you can transition it very easily into stormfire. You can transition it into archmage. You can. Um, mm. but there's lots of different ways you can go about it. Um. Yep. even just from because, the assassin which is super super interesting yeah because the reason i'm not playing discharge because mm. that would basically be possible on the same setup or almost the same setup that i was doing is i'm yeah. worried about the clear clear a little bit um yes because you have as an assassin you actually move pretty fast as we already said mm -hmm. like with elusive mm -hmm. and like quicksilver so i think you will travel through screens and clear them and then you arrive at the next screen full of mobs in less than two seconds <laughs> yes oh, <laughs> and totally, then you're like totally awkward yes <laughs> okay now boom everything dies next screen yeah. awkward yeah Boom. that's everything that's what i, I was super might, worried about might yeah. happen. i mean yeah. cooldown reduction exists so you can probably and will probably to min max such a build you would have to invest heavily into cooldown reduction from like mm -hmm. belt and uh, uh influence gear but yeah. yeah i think that's kind of like what i was worried and fireball totally. is just so nice i was like fireball easy just like yes three screens GMP firewall fork. is uh, you you've, you've picked a really strong build and with the firewall as well or flame wall is it firewall or flame wall i'm getting super confused it should be firewall but it's flame Fire... wall. <laughs> i know fireball firewall sounds so good to say yeah. anyway um also, that's gonna be super yeah. strong that's that's just try leveling true. i think to get it oh, at yeah. mud flat by the way so it's just like fireball oh, yeah. level one level yeah. four flame uh -huh. wall set set for end game <laughs> mm -hmm. that's my plan and then at level 80 archmage stormfire one shot bosses yep yep <laughs> um, but talking about um one shotting bosses mm. uh 450 damage effectiveness on discharge yeah. mm -hmm. um did you run any numbers on like funny stuff like uh disintegrator or maybe martyr of innocence i didn't yet Th those are those are two things i still want to play around with because i'm not done playing around with discharge yet um so archmage I, is still going to look insane um yes Yes. like that's that's absolutely huge and the numbers on that are massive but they're not necessarily easy to obtain like the the, the route that i'm mm -hmm. taking is just really 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 cheap uh league starter but archmage if you're going to be pushing out the damage from discharge archmage looks like it's the way to go um but yeah disintegrator as well looks pretty pretty yeah, i mean that thing yeah. without without any what's called the siphoning charges without mm. any charges you get mm -hmm. like I think 2.5k flat fizz just from that on discharge yeah. just without without anything just like that just the fizz and fizz mm -hmm. you can like eternity shroud and stuff if you like really want to go dumb dumb numbers yeah, yeah. um <laughs> and there's also martyr of innocence which has like yeah absurd amounts of flat fire damage yeah. um the malachi the malachi unique mask so if anyone is looking mm -hmm. at like other discharge variants i think those flat anything that has high amounts of flat damage like the uh prophesized fated mm -hmm. uh, malachi mask yeah add one with discharge yeah the, the really especially with the tri thing. pen gem oh yeah oh yeah the 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 interesting thing is uh, like and again i've heard a lot of people talking about the flat damage effectiveness on uh, sorry the damage effectiveness on 
on discharge. Um, but with such a high base uh, flat damage already, it's not as strong as it looks. It's still very strong. 450% is still massive, the best in the game, obviously. That's that's <laughs> insane. But we do have to remember as well, it is on a two-second cooldown. It's not like just yep. spamming a 240% effectiveness fireball, you know, um, which, yes. you know, if you actually do the calcs, you know, you can actually uh, end up, if you've got e really, really high added higher, damage, yeah. fireball is actually better, you know, like... Um, that's why I think Archmage is really good because it really favors those one button massive mm -hmm. hit clicks, regen yeah. oh, your you mana. Could, you could go use again. what's it called? Is it Mana Storm? The the shield that uses all your mana and adds another flat chunk. Oh yeah. And then if you sync and if you sync uh -huh. that up with uh, Arcane Cloak as well, you're just oh, like no. <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> ah, my ten thousand be... mana is gone. <laughs> Yeah, my 10,000 mana is gone, and now I'm dealing uh, that uh, as damage into your face. I think we will see one-shots <laughs> in this league. I think I don't think uh, there's it's any bot that league. won't get one-shot in this league with oh, yeah. this charge. There yeah. will be and all the compilations on Reddit. I'm planning to be the guy that does that. You just you just wait. Discharge is, is mine, all right? I claim it. No, I can't claim it, but it's I, I'm so But you happy. still do. Yeah, I still no, claim no, it. No, I'm going to defend it. Whenever I see anyone... Uh, playing discharge everyone if you see someone playing discharge you're like ah so you're playing badger's build yes That's yeah okay yeah 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 definitely yep. yeah just direct them straight to me because i'm the creator of discharge no now yep. now i'm taking it too far but i am don't worry yeah no. that's true though <laughs> <laughs> um all right yeah, yeah. Discharge is one of the highlights of the patch notes mm. i think for sure yeah so, like yeah. some nice things but this charge is really really cool also yeah. it's something that i personally really like is the uh, vit vitality changed i mean it's like three to four years yeah. after i thought they would change it but they did yes. <laughs> so it's pretty good it's taken a very long time that has always been um a, a dumpster skill as i like to call them a d dumpster aura uh, apart from you know the watcher's eye vitality mod and then you just use that for leveling and then you know they just changed everything up didn't they yeah <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think vitality for leveling will be like very decent, mm -hmm. um, especially in like hardcore where maybe dying is not an option. <laughs> yeah, Usually. yeah. I, I, um, I was saying to some people, um, if you have enough damage during the leveling process and you're playing, you know, a health based build and you've got mana, just use vitality now. Like, like it's just gonna it's just gonna keep you really really survivable, especially with the nerf to the the cooldown of enduring cry, making it not as good for you know sustained sustained sustain <laughs> um, it's, it's more of an oh yeah. shit button now less of a yes. um i'm gonna top myself off permanently button which i yeah. think is a good i think good it's thing. good thing yeah still good for leveling probably it's basically a, oh, yeah. an extra health pot on a cooldown mm -hmm. with the second one yeah yeah but yeah and also for end game i mean 200 almost 250 life regen is not like negligible on mm -hmm. end game that's like yeah. more than most non-invested characters will have right like what do you usually have on life regen on like a build that doesn't actually focus on it like maybe 150 or so yeah not not much 100 yeah yeah, yeah 200 yeah and but that's like... just a lot more if if you're investing in life regen any sort of build that's investing in that that's just a lot more on top there that will multiply and, and do good stuff which is pretty nice yep yeah, from all the recovery rate what do you think about the watchers i nerfs for the flat region uh, flat reservation auras uh, I think it's a really good move, uh, in, in my opinion. Um, especially, like, it, it's the weird thing with Vitality. Like, I'm just going to talk about Vitality again, because the nerf to that one, the, the only reason it was ever used was for just really cheesing the early game with uh, Vitality, Righteous Fire builds, like, super, super, super easy. And, you know, on one hand, I do really get you know, wanting to get through the leveling process quickly because, like, if you're making so many builds in a league, you you just want to cheese the leveling process. You really do. Um, but it it felt um, it felt unfair to the vitality gem itself. <laughs> like you're equipping this vitality gem just for a little bit. Don't worry, I'm gonna I'm gonna reject you soon once you know I've got enough regen from other places. Uh, but yep. uh, um, yeah, I I thought they're pretty well balanced and are bringing things back into like there, was, there are the other nerfs as well right the um uh hang on i'm just actually patch notes. precision yeah. precision and clarity had some nerfs like i think the, yeah. the clarity um mana as uh ses one got hit mm -hmm. the mana recovery from uh that and the crit multi yes 
yeah. from Precision, which I think is fair. There's yeah. still the crazy attack damage and attack speed ones on mm -hmm. Precision, which are crazy good, like 15% attack speed, and I think it's 50% attack speed, attack damage still. Yeah. So there's still enough reason to run a level 1 Precision if you really want to mm -hmm. with the Watcher's Eye. Yeah. I and think it's a fair nerf. Yeah, I, I, to, to go in that a bit more with Watcher's Eye, like, for me... Using Watcher's Eye uh, mods on your auras and everything like that, it's always a toss-up of how much do I want to reserve of my mana to then also get that bonus. Like, say I'm playing a character, say like like an assassin or something like that, and I'm not usually using Zealotry. I'd probably use, you know, maybe Wrath or something else there. But if I've got a really good Watcher's Eye with a Zealotry mod, you know, I might change that up and I get more DPS out of that. With Clarity and Precision... Um, and now, you know, Vitality, uh, you could just get basically a free mod by slapping on a level one gem, even if your build didn't use Clarity or, you know, anything like that. And that's what we see from Clarity, you know, with every Watcher's Eye, it's just a level one Clarity in a slot somewhere, um, which, which is a very kind of band-aid solution to how those Watcher's Eyes work. So I think it's, I, I think it's really, really good. It's now going to make you, um... Uh, value those a little bit better or, or worse i guess yeah yeah anyway yeah yeah they're like, like yeah it's not as worth anymore but i think yeah. we will still see that use oh we'll, we'll definitely still, still see definitely it. worth yeah. it <laughs> <laughs> it's not gone it's definitely not gone yeah yeah um yeah is there any other like things in the patch notes for me it's been a, a crazy day of like jumping back and forth between trying to decide what builds i want to play what are the other kind of builds that that got your attention that you know are still going to be pretty strong to play that you reckon uh builds that you know might still be really safe league starters but not quite making the cake for you um that's actually like I have, I have a few on my path of buildings. I'm looking. That's why I'm yeah. looking over there right yeah. now. Um, but I tried. I, I actually thought about doing Corsic Arrow, Corsic mm -hmm. Arrow with uh, Azanas Chant and um, what's it called? Uh, Soul Rend. Mm -hmm. It's like a build. I, I think I saw first uh, Taki Cat play it first, but he probably didn't like come up with that. Mm -hmm. um, it's basically the, in my opinion, the smoothest way to clear with Corsic Arrow because whenever you shoot a Corsic Arrow, you also do a GMP Soul Rend to clear like all trash, and you basically just use caustic arrow for single target um and mm, rare that sounds really good enemies and i think that's like a really smooth place that great mapper and you can just go um yeah es hybrid uh, with evasion and like do the trickster thing basically yeah um, i think that's pretty good <laughs> uh lacerate i think lacerate glad is still really good i think also bleed mm -hmm. bow glad is still really good um i mm. zero crafted both of those i still want to play traps at some point lightning trap is uh, I, I did some league star testing it's still a fantastic build. It's just you have to like the playstyle, right? Like if you yeah. if you'd want to play a good build, but you don't think you would enjoy traps, don't 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 leak start traps. Try it a bit later, see if you like it, and maybe leak start it another time. Yeah. And and something I played last league that I think is still really good because it didn't see any changes. Basically, is a blade for blade blast. I think that's still pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I I've been wanting to play that for a very long time. I've always had my eye on it. It always seems like it's the next build that I'm going to play, and then I never play it. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> but yeah, maybe it, maybe this league will play it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a fantastic build, and um, especially uh, inten with the intensity buffs. Uh, Intensify was a support that you oftentimes already use on on Blade Blast because you would cast it like two or three times on a boss to like detonate faster. Mm. Um, because with an Unleash Blade Fall setup, you can generate so many blades that you can detonate them like two, three, four times. So they cascade True. faster to get more DPS. So we you would already use that because also the AOE overlap does generate um, more damage as well. So even on the higher like low stack intensity, you do more damage, and on the higher stack intensity, you all still do more damage. So that's pretty good. Oh yeah. Um, that's also kind of like a bit of a buff but yeah i think all, everything that was not in patch notes obviously is still fine you can still play like arc you can still play toxic rain you can still play essence drain you can still mm -hmm. play i don't know yeah lacerate glad works um you can still play like eq or earth shatter i think those are fine tectonic slam is probably also really good um if you like yeah. slam oh totally um yeah but and everything else like divine eye totems freeze pulse totems i did think about start really starting totems for a while um, I think it's still good. And with the, like, if you if you can like leak start a bit later, <laughs> like like a bit slower, <laughs> you can. I think with what we saw from the stuff that was has been revealed, and if you're fine with like maybe MF farming low tier maps for a while, 
Mm. Elemental bows might actually be back with the Shroud of the Lightless. Oh. If you go for like oh. an MF setup, MF setup, and like let's say you farm tier seven maps on a like a Wind River setup and for just to make currency, and then at some point you just like buy the Shroud of the Lightless, like eight to ten insane jewels a good bow and you just go like all right i'm tier 16 ready now um yeah if that's your thing <laughs> like if you enjoy um, mfing maps like tower i think is what was it tower is tier one map now um you can farm oh. those nurses yeah and those yeah. chevrons is early with an mfr so yeah. i think this is a good league for like playing that type of league mm -hmm. starting setup i think that's kind of like a bit of a more advanced i wouldn't say that's like a beginner friendly thing but if you're like a bit of an intermediate player you played mf before that's mm -hmm. kind of like my secret pick. What's, yeah, what's your that's, that's a good stuff? secret pick. I, 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 I was fully aware of the of, of tower being tier one and residence being tier two, which you can get a six link div card from as well. Yeah, um, which it's is great for uh, really SSF really strong. Especially. Really, yeah, really really good for SSF. Um, but we, uh, look, uh, uh, yeah, I'm almost certain that we're going to see a lot of MF bow builds farming those towers or or you know, any sort of MF build. It's a tier one. Uh, you can start doing it really, really early. You can kind of set up your Atlas fairly well and then just not complete any other maps to pretty much just drop what you need to from uh, the tower area. Um, so I think there's going to be a, a fairly condensed but very strong subset of players that will want to do that and will generate a lot of uh, currency through that. Um which is it's it's going to be pretty interesting there's going to be a lot of headhunters float uh floating on the market and with discharge being so strong badge of the brotherhood i uh, this is this is this is badges badge of the brotherhood prediction it's going to be twice as expensive as headhunter i'm, I'm saying it now now oh actually oh uh, I'm, I'm gonna I say it's going to be 1.25 because there is blight on the map device yeah i so, think i think yeah. um I think also Blight Towers got buffed, so... True. Which, that was actually the most surprising patch note. That was not really surprising, I don't think yeah. they deserve it, but no. I just mm -mm. did not think they mm -mm. would have that on their agenda, like, anyway. Anywhere yeah. on the agenda. Yeah! So, Blight, buff Blight Towers. No. I'm just... I'm sure that, like, it was one developer who was pretty high up in GGG that just... Who just, like, like, really likes Blight. Loves Blight so much, but doesn't, like, just, just wants to you know, do it even easier and just slipped that one in, you know, right under Chris's nose. Um, and, and now it's, you know, now it's in the game. And so, yeah, if you, if you haven't got into blight maps, uh, before, uh, this league is, it's going to be easier to get into and they are always consistent money. They're yep. not always the most money that you can make per hour, but it's very, very consistent. Um, especially, yep. well, obviously only if you're playing in a trade league or anything like that. But um, yeah, just like YouTube, a couple of videos about it and uh, about blight maps and, and go and try a couple of low tier ones and you'll see the returns. It's it's pretty, pretty awesome. Yep. Yeah. And talking about like blight on the map device, um, mm. the Zana mods are looking really juicy oh, right now. So good. Um, I'm someone <laughs> who always, who always runs a fortune favors the brave. Because yeah. It's always like bank. But mm -hmm. this time... The average cost the is like I think like eight C or something like this because delirium is so insane. It, you get it's insane because they're all mm. equally weighted, right? And you can mm. uh, pick fortune favors from the like once you un unlock it. Even if you don't have delirium, it can still pick delirium. I think fortune favors is the way to go. Like if you unless mm. you're like super juicing maps, just like pick fortune favors every yeah. time you can afford it. I, I think it's it was like I, I saw someone doing it like five point eight chaos on so not quite eight chaos on average, but like five point eight almost it's six like chaos crazy. on average. Yeah, six scale something like half this. of that to do fortune favors the brave so over time like that's just insane and then you know yep. scoring lucky on the um on the delirium as well and you, you know if if you're running high tier maps and juicing most of your maps and everything like that then fortune favors the brave is going to be really 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 good while also giving you a lot of different content which is going to keep the game really fresh as well like you're not just slamming those deliriums and 16 chaos per pop or you know as what's probably going to happen, you know, like three X per map pop with the, the highest, highest crafters uh, in the game. I mean, if um, you go for yeah. the highest, you don't run the delirium, right? You would yeah, uh, put orbs on there and run something else. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, for everyone else, I think fortune, once you get into, let's say like tier 14-ish maps and you like chisel org, mm -hmm. I think 
just pop it on there. If you have the yeah. the currency, you Definitely. will make it back. You will one hundred percent make it back. Yeah. And yeah, Beyond is on there. A lot of people love seeing, seeing that. Um, mm -hmm. I personally like seeing Blight on there. And yeah. then they're like the low value ones. I think it's Abyss, Bloodlines, Nemesis, so Headhunters are a mm -hmm. thing. Um, which are like the what's it called like the value ones. You still get like extra packs out of them. You get, uh, but they don't feel that different. Yeah. Oh, at least totally. to me. I'm yeah. never like, oh, an abyss. That must be my fortune favors the brave. I'm usually assuming it's no, uh, no legion though. So uh, yeah. timeless jewels could be a yes. bit on the expensive side. So they very much could um, be. Yeah, yeah. Keep keep your keep your uh, plans for timeless jewels or timeless keystones a bit a bit lower on the league start. Mm. I would uh, recommend. Mm. What, that also uh, reminds me of one thing I did want to quickly bring up. We do, I, I do really want to move to curses and talk about them because we haven't even talked about curses yet. But let's, on, let's go. Curses. Yeah, yeah. On uh, quickly on uh, on delirium and you know all the map mods and everything like that. What do you think uh, about cluster jewels coming into this league and losing harvest but still having them quite difficult to craft without harvest? How, how do you feel uh, about uh, about cluster jewels? Did you do much crafting in harvest with cluster jewels, and how overpowered it was? Did not craft a single cluster jewel with harvest oh. craft. Oh, wow. So I, I got all my I self crafted all my jewels. So yeah. um, I, like after the buffs, I think it's still like difficult, but yeah. I don't think it's impossible. Yeah, we'll see yeah. how that goes. Maybe we'll, they'll get like a little bit of a buff next patch. They do take yeah. forever, but then. I think with the current state, like last patch, the uh, passive tree saw like such a big overhaul mm -hmm. on a lot of areas. They changed so many nodes. I find it easier to plan out a full build without cluster jewels, and then like later fit them in by cutting some of the lesser, less worth stuff. Oh yeah. These days, than it was like maybe when Delirium was out. So I, mm. I'm I'm all right with it, and I think yeah. cluster jewels are in, a, in an all right spot. Maybe buff like some of the notables like slightly over the. Uh, it's tiny stats, but yeah. How, how do you yeah. feel about them? Like yeah, or... yeah. I, I, I think, um, I think cluster jewels should be really difficult to craft uh, to unlock those crazy power things on the tree. Every end game build in the entire game, bar like maybe one or two, if you're really min maxing a build, you've got like two large cluster jewels in there probably um, that are you know perfect and everything like that. So I like, I think it's 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 going to be really good and it's going to make it harder to get to that stage. Which means that, you know, you're not just playing like a budget build and then crafting those jewels and going straight into yep. end game build. There's going to be progression. You're going to find a little bit of a better cluster jewel and put that in. Then you're going to find a better one or craft a better one and put that in next and everything like that. Um, I don't really see that though. Like the yeah. problem is, um, the cl with cluster jewels is they do need to hit a certain baseline before mm. they are even better than the tree. Right? True. Like, true. Yeah. Um, yeah. And basically, class. What I what I don't like about cluster jewels and crafting them is they are there's like a certain threshold until which <laughs> they are completely worthless because they're worse than your tree nodes. And then at that point, they are just better than your tree nodes and you put them in. Yeah, there's true, not, not much in between. And then you can just like min max them from that point. But if you yeah. have like a, say a 10, 12 passive uh, large jewel, it's trash. Do you five to yeah. one recipe? Yeah. <laughs> and I don't think they are all that well designed in that aspect. And yeah. maybe that would, it would have been nicer like that's what i how i felt about them from the beginning mm. um it's maybe like instead of having different passive numbers where it's almost always the right way to craft is like immediately available or like the right number you want um maybe have like some other changes like for example the the power of the notables uh changed not with like small mods but with the enchantment they yeah. could have done like tweak them a bit where it's there's more of a scale and which are like mm -hmm. okay at this point they're worth it and then like become gradually more worth it and not worthless better than the tree yeah and then you just like have like this <laughs> much room for min maxing i think that's not that cool of a design currently so i'm not yeah too too uh, excited about the progression curve there it's more yeah. like, like okay i got my cluster set up chuck it in respect yeah. done yeah yeah super good point yeah anyway Let's move on because we need to get to curses and talk about curses. Uh, well, you know, we don't need to, but I want to. <laughs> we, we probably <laughs> need to. There's no, a we lot. have to talk about curses. We're both going to hate this, Come on. Uh, this section. <laughs> but uh, yeah, curses. Um, mm -hmm. We touched about a little bit about uh, on this one. Mm -hmm. um, I talked about like hexes and marks, but there's also doom. Yeah. Doom blast, like the impending doom, doom oh. blast mechanic and hex blast. Yeah, I, I'm just gonna. How come, do you feel about those? Yeah, I, I, I'm just gonna come out and, and say like 
I'm still a bit confused about curses. How? Like, confused confused about all of these different types of curses and everything like that. Not, not like, confused like, oh, there's too many choices, or I don't know what they do and everything like that. But we haven't... Um, we haven't fully seen how everything in the game that has, you know, had something to do with a curse or, or a hex or a mark that we're now calling them and everything like that, how all the uniques are going to be changed in, in those, you know, we've always been baked into our minds that a curse is either a circle on the ground that you, that you put, or you can curse on hit single targets or multiple targets if you hit multiple targets. And so having differences... Yeah, and or you could aura, yeah, yeah, uh, which is really cool as well. And oh, I, by the I way, think... talking about interjection, curse yeah. on hit, they mm-hmm. renamed it. It's now called Hex Touch. Hex That's the lamest Touch. name ever. <laughs> That's a pretty lame name. Yeah, Hex yeah. Not Touch. gonna lie, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like when I read, it. I was like, awakened Hex Touch. What? Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't want to play that. Hex Touch. I don't care what. what? It does. <laughs> don't Hex Touch me, please. Yeah, I'm please, gonna... please no. Um, yeah, I, I think I really like the idea of marks, um, but I, I, I don't like that we're losing some curses or what we're now kind of calling hexes, the kind of main bulk of curses to these kind of subset of, of marks. Um, I, I think it could have been pretty interesting if we could choose to, have a weaker hex or a stronger mark depending on you know how how we wanted to adjust that i don't know how that would look but um yeah that, that being said like marks are going to be really really cool for uh bossing for example if we talk about assassin the nurse to flat critical uh strike chance or anything like that is now getting basically put onto assassin's mark not weakened against bosses anymore it's full strength so if you're using assassin's mark on an assassin you have mm-hmm. more base crit than what you originally did on assassin yep. easier to cap even which is, um... calculating in the old assassin mark so if you had an assassin's mark on hit ring minus curse resistance you're still better off now yeah yeah because it's, good, it's yeah. like full effectiveness on bosses with marks which is crazy yes. which i also understand that the reason we're not getting you know to choose any kind of curse as a mark or a hex is probably because the elemental curses would be very overpowered if we could turn them into a mark and then mm-hmm. have full effectiveness of reduced uh, or, or yep. penetration of elements or something like that on the boss. Like that would be yeah. absolutely crazy. So I, I understand yeah, they... it, but it yeah, it's it's rough. Yeah, yeah. I think that's why I actually believe that it's a very smart change to have these two different things mm. because they can balance them completely separately. Like almost. Mm. I mean, there's still curse effect which affects both but they're gonna have um like marks have different things i think there's uh the mark notes uh, did you look at the mark passive tree notes i didn't look fully at all of them no no they are insanely strong you should yeah they are crazy there's like i think it's like culling strike against marked enemies uh increased damage taken by a decent amount like 10 percent, 15 percent for marked enemies it is it is it is some some nice stuff uh for the marks so i I think marks i think if you can fit a mark into your build Mm mm-hmm you should. <laughs> I, I, I really like, like, uh, uh, that's what I was going to say about marks as well. Like, I've always, always loved Deathmark on minion builds, just thematically. I love the idea of going, like, you get that and just, like, all of your minions swarm it and deal more damage to it. You know, I, I like basically transitioning that to us. You know, like, you look at an enemy and you're like, you, I'm coming to get you. And then you just deal way more damage to that single enemy. I think that's super, super cool. And thematically, yep. like, uh, I, I think it's a super, super awesome change. And, you know, that's not to be discounted. Themes are, are very important in a game like this, to me at least. Yeah. Yep. No, th- same for me as well. Um, mm. I, I just, like, looked them up so I can tell you what they exactly they do. Yeah. Um, there's, there are two. One is uh, at the same as, like, Winter Spirit and Flash Freeze. And mm-hmm. that, that's at that node attached and it's ten, uh, marked enemies take 10 percent increased damage and they grant 30 percent increased flash flash charges to you oh um, which yeah that's actually pretty damn good okay um, yeah. and that's also uh, one of the minor ones is like 30 percent increased crit chance which is not bad for like travel node yeah and the other one has like, that culling strike and also some damage with mm-hmm. its elements which is not that great i think the the flask charges node is pretty damn good if yeah. you have uh, was it um i think it's sniper's mark that grants you flask charges on hit on a, on a cooldown that oh that could be super strong 
with a pathfinder yeah sniper's mark yeah hang on i've got it right here uh they now grant a life flask and mana flask charge when you hit them no more than once every 0 0.5 seconds at all which levels. is okay but it also gives you a 30 percent increased mm -hmm. flash charges gain from that and then you can get like stuff uh, other sources of that uh yeah. Mechanic. I think there's there's some potential there to like actually sustain charges, uh, flash charges on bosses, which which might potentially yeah. be insane for pathfinders. Very true. Infinite infinite flasks on bosses. I reckon through snipers. Yeah, yeah. I think you could very easily do that. Yeah. Yeah. If you have like a fast really cool. build. Yeah. 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 Some potential. Yeah. Definitely. Ah, that's that's pretty cool. Um. Yeah. Well, marks are really cool. What do you, what do you think about hexes? They also exist. Yeah. I don't know. They're like um, what I what I kind of like <laughs> is that we are finally getting what's called the doomsday um, mechanic, mm -hmm. where you uh, put a uh, hex as an AOE effect. I think that's pretty cool mm -hmm. um, because bosses had that for a while now, right? Where they like spawn these like yeah. little areas of curses. Yeah. I was like, I want that. When I saw the boss, I, I was like, I, I kind of want that. Is as it well. similar as well to Doedry skin? I've never actually used that unique, so I don't actually know the um. It's like a cursed chest Do piece. Doedry skin puts stuff on uh, totems, right? Oh, it is a totem. Yeah, never summon, mind. Yeah, you yeah, summon yeah. like yeah. some like totems. Um, yeah, it's, they look look similar to the uh, ones that Dirty summons the the yes. cursing totems. Yes, it's a bit similar to that. But yeah, um, yeah, I think it's uh, it's a kind of like nice to have a way. Um, but it also is weird with the doom mechanic. So how it reads, I don't quite understand how this one works. It's mm. um, your hexes and spells create an hex area for one second. So it's just like one second duration. It's like whoop, gone. Mm -hmm. Right. Enemies hexed uh, in the hex area are hexed. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the hex does not expire when uh, while the hexed area, uh, while in the hexed area. So it mm -hmm. only starts expiring once the one second duration is gone. And then hexes applied this way do not gain doom over time. Instead, they get go to maximum doom, doom after the one second duration ends. Is it a one second duration? I'm just looking at the passive. It says. Is that on the. Uh, sorry, I'm looking it says, at the patch notes. It says, it says it on the node, it says the first line is your hex curse spells create a hexed area for one second. So okay. If you the were area to reduce duration, seconds. is that is that going to work on, on your your hex areas? I'm just imagining, like, actually I think kind that's of a... fast casting doomsday, just like... Bush, 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 bush. I think how, how um, like mechanics and duration and tag inheritance or like not, not mechanic inheritance on path of exile works i think on this one is a clear maybe yeah <laughs> if that works <laughs> because it's a clear uh, and it, definite it, maybe it possibly <laughs> could work but we can't know <laughs> we just cannot know because i was actually kind of uh before i actually thought about it the very first time the curses were um announced uh i was thinking about doing some sort of really cool kind of unleash like multiple override curse on the ground but then i'm like oh wait it has to be different curses to override each other and then they wouldn't be able to stack up doom properly and so it's like oh no. cool kind of like doom blast craziness but doomsday might allow us to do something of the sort maybe i mean you basically um, don't the, the problem is that the curses don't expire while they're in the hexed area right so mm -hmm. no doom blast for one second and then once it goes away they are cursed mm-hmm and they, with max doom but then after that one second they're still cursed for the whole duration of your curse is what i'm getting from this oh, i don't think yeah. they're just hexed i don't think they're just hexed within the area because it would not make sense for the hex to have maximum doom yes. at the end of the duration if the curse ends unless it's just for doom blast but i don't think mm. doom stay is just for doom blast that's very true yeah yeah that's gonna be really interesting i think uh, this is this is what most people are confused about. Well, the, the thing that is the most confusing about the patch notes, and, you know, you can still kind of get your head around it, but we don't fully know what this looks like until someone, you know, gets right in there and tests everything to do with Doomsday, which no. I think is super, super interesting. And I'm hoping that it's broken in some way because <laughs> I love to see that kind of stuff. I, I really do. Um, uh, yeah. But, yeah, yeah. No, I, I think... What do you think about the whole Doom mechanic in general? Like, having hand cast curses have a buff i think we all can agree makes sense yes and i said yeah. just said hand cast which is the wrong way to say self cast yeah and, um, <laughs> well it, it sounds cooler me. hand casting you know you're like whoa sticking um, your hand out and cursing enemies in front of you but yeah i mean yes 
but we like wand casting and and staff casting yeah really, true. right so that's kind of boring though system. like yeah <laughs> doriani's uh fist uh, yeah, I, I'm, gonna, okay. I'm gonna play a no weapon curse build just so I can hand cast instead of uh, okay. self cast. Yeah, no, because um... I'm gonna. If, if, but yeah, fist cast that that part makes sense. But the do mechanic where you have to like yeah. wait for yeah. the curse to actually build up mm -hmm. in potential. How do you like that? Like PUE being a fast game and all. Yeah, Does that make sense? I, everything that I see, if I can talk kind of meta about the patch notes and the patches in general, uh, especially well. Uh, I, I guess Delirium wasn't like this, but from Delirium, everything has been slowing the game down. And it's been optional slowing. Like, the yeah. game has still been fast. It, like, okay. I was like, wait, yeah. the game didn't slow down. But yeah, no, 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 no. Optional. Yeah, yeah. You can still go fast, but there are options to slow down. And I think what Grinding Your Games is trying to do is kind of ease us in that direction so that once Path of Exile 2 comes out and it is a little bit of, well, this is just my theory, a, quite a bit of a slower gameplay style will be a little bit more conditioned to how that feels. Pressing more buttons and going slower. And we all love pressing more buttons, don't we? <laughs> that was sarcasm, if you didn't pick up on that. Yeah. <laughs> That's just how I feel. I, I really like... Um, the idea of slowing the gameplay down and giving you more options to cast more skills and again with the new skill system coming in poe 2 it makes sense that you're going to have more skills to rotate through and, yeah. and cast and everything like that um mm -hmm. but right now the doom mechanic doesn't feel good like that's that's my tldr of what i was just saying there right now in my head the doom mechanic doesn't feel good because you have to wait and we don't want to wait in the current meta of path of exile oh. um Especially, yeah. yeah, especially because the hexes are not the curses you want to use on bosses. That's mm -hmm. marks, and yep. marks don't have doom, and yep. everything that's not a boss just dies. Yep. But yeah. yeah. All I right. Think marks Change the topic. Hex yeah. blast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Hex blast. Hex blast. Yeah. I. I think. I think just from like the, the design point, this has to be one of the most interesting skills. Yeah. Right. With the with the elemental penetration mechanic, it has. It's really it has interesting, be. yeah. Because what it does is it applies, uh, it works against the lowest resist of the enemy. Yes. So whatever resist is the lowest, that's mm -hmm. what it works against. So it basically picks and chooses the best way to do to deal damage against the metal resistance and chaos, I think, as well. Mm -hmm. uh, because it is a chaos damage skill. It can choose shock, ignite, freeze, yeah. which is interesting as well i think it's really cool like again i'm going to talk about the theme for a second that's just a really cool theme of like casting this massive kind of hex blast as it is called that can just do all of the elements and you feel so strong if you you know can proc them all um yeah i find, I find it thematically actually i find it weird <laughs> yeah like, uh, yeah i find it thematically a bit weird because like, why does the chaos spell do elemental elements? I don't get it. Like, what's yeah. the what's yeah, the true. thing here? It feels a bit like the mechanically is interesting from a, like a gameplay design, but from mm -hmm. like a lore point of view, it's like, what's this weird? Why is this spell so different mm -hmm. than everything? Mm -hmm. else? It's just like there's certain rules on which spells can inflict what, and there's some mechanics like Voltax Rift which um, uh, work around that. But yeah. this spell is just like screw those rules. I'm doing my own thing. I'm picking my resist. Even though I'm a chaos spell, I'm doing ailments because I'm a chaos spell, and I don't give a crap. But um, I think yeah. the design is super fun, and it's really interesting. And looks, the visuals are cool as well, like this yeah. blast coming. Yeah. Out. May I tag onto the end of that because of the interaction with uh, the uh, resistance? You know, uh, lowering the resistance, or, or uh, well, I, I can't remember the exact wording, but you know, lowering elemental resistance and everything like that. Uh, that is another layer to a fairly uh, overlooked mechanic that is very hard to get working, but if you get it working well, which is Eye of Malice uh, negative resistances on enemies and multiplying that with Eye of Malice, um, you can now get to even further down, like negative 250, negative 300 resistance on enemies uh, with insane investment um, mm -hmm. to a very specific niche mechanic. Um, <laughs> but it can still... Uh, I, I'm waiting for the true one-shot discharge Eye of Malice build uh, that 
I will potentially, hopefully, make. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just like another source of, of multiplying the negative resistances on enemies, which is really, really cool. Or not so much Sweet. multiplying, but adding to that. Yeah. I just, just looked another source up of um, negative resistances. Mm. Um, Doriani's prototype, but that's harvest specific, so rip. Um, <laughs> I, ah, I just looked true. up if it was harvest specific, uh, and it is. So no. I think that's kind of like a, like ah. a dope. Yeah. I mean, you can you still get it from uh the time lost relic cards and stuff like this like the oh, way you can get time even if the mechanic is not core, you can you still get I don't know actually. Potentially. On the yeah, wiki that's, it that's says you can get it from time lost relic. So, mm. but that's like automatically added. But I yeah. think it's just going to be omega rare. <laughs> yes. And omega yeah. expensive. Yeah. And Will really it be cool expensive to use though. With How many people were using it? Um like but since Mathel made the build, a oh, lot of true. yeah, true, 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 true. We we always um, forget about the Mathel effect, don't we? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. and the build was like he showcased was actually pretty cool. I think it was really it strong. It was, it was really cool yeah. for quite a while. A very underrated chess piece. Um, yes, yeah. yes, I think it's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, oh, it says deal no non lightning damage. So I think using it on a chaos spell might be difficult. Mm. Might not get your full damage potential out if you do don't do any non lightning damage. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay, I take that back. It's not going to be expensive. <laughs> hmm. I mean, it's hmm. still going to be expensive because it's rare and some yeah. people want to use it. But ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, okay. Never mind. Never mind. I thought <laughs> I just backtrack one, on that. I'll just delete the last cool three idea. minutes of the podcast. It's all good. Yeah. 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 Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Now that we are back from the deletion break. Um... Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, everyone, for uh, uh, listening through that. And you don't know what was deleted, but uh, now now we're back. It's it's all good. We're yeah. back, and that was definitely not the crap build idea that Yoji had. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was actually a really good build, so we actually had to hide it so you guys didn't hear it, because um, yeah. it would have broken the meta. But yeah, <laughs> I, got, I got one more melee thing that I want to put in. Yes, um, yes. Uh, that was I'm actually kind of excited for to use that item at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, Camarias Avarice, yeah, the fated Camarias Mall got a buff. Don't know if you even even you probably like skip that as a, like a totally non melee skip that. Just, like, Enlighten me. What 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 is this? So I what Camaris Evers does? It's yeah. uh, has a bit better stats. Uh, it's like the critical mace. Um, yeah. It has a bit better stats than the Camarius Mall, and it has pr uh, procs currently on the current three point eleven. It procs uh, icicle. What's called icicle shards on kill. Mm. So when you hit an enemy, it's like a, like a little nova of ice shards, like really nice for clearing. Mm. It now procs them on hit. Oh. That's kind of cool. They Do we know the cooldown on that? Now. We probably nope. don't. No, we've got no idea. I hope so it's it could not be, five minutes. <laughs> it could be 0 0.1 second. It could be four hours. We don't know. <laughs> I hope, I'm hoping for something like, maybe, I, nice would be a Mjolnir proc rate would be nice. Yes. So 0.15, uh, I think it is. That would be crazy good. Um, I'd be happy with like 0.25. That would mm. be nice. 0.5 would probably still be good enough for clearing and getting like some. You can also put utility, like you can cur curse on, not a curse on hit, you can't, but you can um, like proc other things with it. I don't know. You could use it for stuff. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's for great, great, always been great for clear and adding a bit to a single target, I think is a really good thing. So I think that's a, that's a good change. I'm excited yeah. to try at least. And I'm that hoping the cooldown cool. pans out. Yeah. Let's, fingers so, crossed. Fingers crossed. On hit, on hit Melee. props are, are super fun. I love them. Yep. I think they're really cool. Yeah. Yep. That's, so that that was like on my yay excited list uh, that I have right here. I, I mm -hmm. put like, like a little list. I have like um, yay patch notes. I have oof patch notes, and I have <laughs> hmm patch notes. <laughs> I absolutely. And we talked love about it. most of the oofs and all my yays. So yeah. Really yay! Yay! Uh, my yay, my biggest yay, and this is definitely not a joke. Uh, there's going to be some PvP changes uh, shortly after the launch of 3.12. Who's excited for that, right? No one. Literally no one. P PvP is still yeah, exists in this game? I think PvP is cool. <laughs> I actually think PvP is cool. You do? Oh, um, okay. I just... Um, I used to, like, participate in, like... Uh, for just, just for fun. I never, like, went competitively, but in yeah. whenever, like, some... I think Project PT used to do like these small PvP tournament things, mm. like level twenty-eight. I think it is PvP stuff. I used to make like a yeah. pre do the pre-made character, respec it a bit, put on some like taste of fate or whatever, and like, like run around and try to bash some people. Yeah. Um, 
it's fun. It's but it's not what I play PUE for. That's kind of yeah. like my main issue. Yeah. I think it's I think it's way underrated. But I yeah. don't think many people come into an ARPG because they want to PvP these days. Mm-hmm. Because there are PvP games for that. Yes. <laughs> I'm still, I, think, I still think it's cool, and there, there, I, are, there I, are I do think it's dozens cool well, yeah. of people enjoying PvP in this game. So I dozens, think. maybe even above twenty. What, what, yeah, I'll have to go ask Could them be. all individually to see if they're still interested yep. in PvP. <laughs> uh yes. No, we jest about PvP, but I agree. I, I think it's really interesting. But there's there's just always more things I want to do in PvE than than PvPing. You know. Yeah. Yep. I mean, I've Pretty never legit. been like a much of a pvp player i play lots of dark mm. souls which has great pvp i mm. dabble in it a bit here and there but i never really actually went fully into it and that's the same with PoE really it's mm. it's fun to do a bit like when they did the chicken dinner type thing what's called the the PoE royale where you could win oh, the chicken dinner cool. yeah that was a really cool mode so yeah mm-hmm. it, it does i think it can work and it, i think it's really cool yeah 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 that's yeah. did we get got, through most of that i got three Four big oofs still. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Hit me with your oofs. Because I really want to end this podcast on a downer. So yes, let's, let's go end like, on a uh, downer. Yeah. What do, you, what do you think about uh, rapid fire oofs? I'm just going to toss you just, a patch. Just, and you're just like... rapid fire me so I really just end this podcast in, you know, a deep depression. Okay. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. That, that's the plan. Okay. Yeah. Um, first of all, and feeble no longer reduces crit stats on enemies. What do you think about that? That's an oof. That's an oof. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of people didn't really, like, see that as much, but... I think that's a huge nerf to Enfeeble. Like, yeah. Huge. But it also doesn't no longer nerf crit stats on you <laughs> as a map bot, which is, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we don't, we don't want to hear yays. We only want to hear you, uh, hear oh, oofs, right. Yoji, okay. all right? I so, take that yeah. back because yeah. it, this doesn't actually matter because we're using Curse Flask. Okay, next one. Yes, good. Um, Then the, what's called, uh, Darkness Farmers, are they dead with the stealth uh, to visibility nerf? That's, oh, look. I, I could I could say that's an oof to the people that are darkness farming, but I'm not darkness farming, so it's a meh to me, isn't it? All right, all right, <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. I've never like really went into darkness farming. I tried it out, but it was like, this is not the game I signed up for. It's, yeah. it's interesting. It makes it makes a lot of money, like for yes. very yeah. little interaction with the game. I, I'll will. just put a sentence onto the end of that. Delve is going to be crazy money this league with uh, harvest going out the window and back to fossil crafting and some changes yep. to fossil crafting as well anyway uh if you want to make money but that's don't. not an oof that's a yay we don't, that's a yay don't oh no uh, 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 no more yays all right more oofs go uh whispering eyes oh no <laughs> yeah that's a big oof oh uh, this is they, another they build that i the, yeah it's another build that the, i just the amount of storms you can stack from infinity to five <laughs> yeah. um no and they did some compensation buffs, but I think overall it might not be enough to to make up for it. It, no. it is like a two to three times damage buff with like the bigger. AV. It is a huge buff still, but I don't think it will add up because most whispering ice builds, at least how they worked before, yep. were either unleash it or cast while channeling, fire conversion, uh, mm-hmm. scorching ray stuff, or proc them in some way to like stack storms, and you can't do that anymore. It's yep. Maybe someone will come up with something. I know there's like a very dedicated Whispering Eyes crowd, but yeah, yeah, that that's it's definitely an oof because that is a build that I've been wanting to play again for a really long time. And look, maybe it will still work fairly well, but like I wanted to play the variant where I would play a Scion and I would stack two thousand intelligence and Cyclone with crazy uh, uh, increased duration until my computer literally burnt up, and that's how I wanted to go out uh, in a big ball of fire. So. No, I can't do that. So that that is a big oof. Yeah. yeah. And then for the last oof of the podcast, an oof <laughs> that actually might affect you personally as well, and it uh, affects a build that you I know you've played, uh, Ball Lightning. Mm. Minus this... four flat AOE and twenty percent damage nerf. Oof! It's it's a triple oof. Well, I guess a double oof, not a triple oof. But it's yeah, uh, the damage nerf is not uh, not that bad because. Ball Lightning, well, it's okay. It's really bad for mines, but Archmage Ball Lightning is not that bad for. But the AoE yep. nerf is mm, really big. Ball Lightning's still going to be strong because it's Ball Lightning, but yeah, that's it's still an oof. It's not the best miner uh, out there anymore. I, I mean, AoE? AoE does affect the damage, right? Yes, it, it directly affects the damage. Yeah, yeah. 
It's like a double damage nerf. Like one yeah. for like general scaling. So the, the AOE affects Archmage and the normal one doesn't as much. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Is it deserved? Do you think? Yes. I think it's deserved. <laughs> okay. I think it's deserved. Don't <laughs> worry. Yes. Not, Don't not worry. even I, I played what um last league not yeah in delirium i played an archmage bull lightning character and it was one of the strongest characters that i ever played and i was like this shouldn't exist in the game so yeah it's right. deserved <laughs> i think okay, it's deserved Wait, that, that that's a positive thing then i'm gonna not gonna pull out the last oof and uh, we all right, end all right. On a positive note yeah <laughs> that is uh that, that's pretty much it um yeah we we did get through all of that and we tried to end on some bad oofs but we ended up seeing the the positive light in it anyway so i guess uh I guess I'm a little bit happy now, but still, yeah. I, the biggest thing for me was okay. I've got, um, to, I've got to put another oof just to make oh, it happy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, redemption sentry nerf. Uh, I think it's very justified to nerf the damage, but they also have a thirty-three percent less life, which is always super iffy for specters mm. because mm. as soon as you can't keep them alive anymore, specters just like go from playable to not playable. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think I think they will still be fine. Yes, but I think it's a might make them feel a bit. Meh. Mm. I I got two right. words for that: slave drivers. They're, they're also back. squishy, right? They're back. They're yeah, squishy. but they're they're, they're they're fairly squishy. But they're now back and they're in contention again. We, uh, we've now got two thinking? specters we can use. <laughs> I'm thinking uh, solar guards. Solar guard. Yeah, okay. Three Flame wall. Ish. Yeah. Oh, Play walls. oh my god! Oh. Also, also we got like arch archer specters and everything. We got like so much oh. minion stuff to try, anyways. Yeah, me, I think okay. minions are still. A lot of people are worried powerful. about minions. I think minions are still super <laughs> yeah. fine. <laughs> yep. No worries, guys. Oh yeah, yeah. Necro's yeah. fine. Minions are fine. We're fine. Minions, minions are always fine. When will minions not be fine? Let's just be real. Well, in the past, there was like oh. a long time where I played minions <laughs> where they were time. absolutely not fine. Where you every time you log in, you had to um, go out and like summon all your specters oh. and all your stuff. You don't even have to summon zombies anymore. Yay! By the way. Yep. Yay. So good. Again, oh, okay. I think we oh, cut no. it here because we always will end on a positive note. It just doesn't I've got work. A, I've got a really big oof. I've got a oh, really, yeah. really big oof. Uh, I, I, the I'm, podcast I'm is ending now, everyone. That's oh. the lamest oof ever. <laughs> No, thank you so much for listening, everyone. Um, this has been a fun episode. We went a little bit uh, uh, over our normal kind of time, but it was needed because this is patch notes and patch notes are interesting and, you know, fun and also oofy, especially this time around. Uh, yeah, so thank you so much for watching or listening if you're listening um, after the fact or watching on uh, Yoji's channel as well. Uh, you can, just a reminder to everyone, you can find uh, all of our podcasts. If you ever miss a live episode or if you can't watch it on Yoji's channel, you can find us on major podcasting applications. Definitely go check us out there, uh, like your Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Deezer, everything like that. Um, and uh, yeah, we will see you same time, same place next week for the first episode post-heist launch. With Thanks actual so information. Actual information. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for coming, everyone. And as always, stay sane. Stay sane, exiles. exiles.